This course is about conflicts of interest, in particular, financial conflicts of interest. The goals for this course are four. We're going to define conflicts of interest in biomedical research and the severity of conflicts of interest. We're going to delve into the frequency of financial conflicts of interest in biomedical research. We're going to, third, look at the impact of financial conflicts of interest on research. We're going to finally discuss the safeguards and regulatory requirements for disclosing conflicts of interest, including the NIH and FDA regulations. To get us started, let's consider the case of Dr. Wilson. Dr. Wilson researches stem cells. He has $10,000 of stock in AstraZeneca. He also has $100,000 in a Fidelity mutual fund that targets pharmaceutical companies. Third, he received $2,500 in travel reimbursement from AstraZeneca to present his research at a conference. Does Dr. Wilson have a conflict of interest? So let's go back to our Dr. Wilson at the start. Does Dr. Wilson have a conflict of interest? And the answer is yes. Now, it turns out that the mutual fund is not a conflict of interest, even though it's valued at $100,000. And that's because Dr. Wilson does not control the investment decisions. Those are in the hands of the Fidelity Company. And therefore, Dr. Wilson cannot affect which pharmaceutical companies are invested in. Similarly, he has $2,500 in travel from AstraZeneca. It turns out that $2,500 is below the NIH threshold for significant financial conflict of interest. We will actually investigate the NIH rules and policies in a subsequent lecture. But his $10,000 of stock in AstraZeneca is a conflict because the company does stem cell research and it's the price of the stock could be affected by Dr. Wilson's own research results and his own financial situation could change based upon his own research results. There are two primary ethical concerns related to conflicts of interest for biomedical researchers. One, we want to preserve the sound science, the research results. We want the integrity of the research. And second, we want to protect human research participants from any harm that might result from distorted judgment. Now, financial conflicts of interest among investigators and industry create incentives to serve the commercial interests, the finances, rather than the advancement of scientific knowledge and the protection of human subjects. The outcomes could include restricting publication of negative findings and avoiding the disclosure of adverse events. Conflicts can influence study design decisions, which in turn can favor certain outcomes that can result in higher financial returns. So in this lecture, we've looked at the definition of conflict of interest. We've also explored the fact that it's a tendency to have judgment distorted, not the actual proven distortion of a judgment. We've also seen that the distinction frequently made between potential conflict of interest and actual conflict of interest is wrong, and that distinction carries no weight because a conflict of, of interest occurs when there is the potential for a distorted judgment. And the safeguards against conflict of interest are necessary to protect human research subjects, and also to preserve the soundness and integrity of science and clinical research. In our next lecture, we're going to discuss how conflicts of interest can lead to patient harm and substandard re research. We're going to delve into the severity of conflicts of interest and how we actually determine how severe a conflict of interest is.